Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And it's not too often that I create ones that are dedicated to talking about rumors and new cameras, but I have to say I hopped on the Canon EOS R5 rumor sites and got really intrigued by some of the latest updates, but by someone who has been easily caught into the headline specs of a new camera, I wanted to give you five things to kind of be weary of or to at least know before going out and buying this camera later in a couple months when it comes out or just to generally think about. This is not going to be five reasons to trash this camera because again, there's not too much known about it and that would have been fair since I've never actually used it. These are just five things to know before buying the Canon EOS R5. Now, if you haven't heard, Canon recently confirmed some of the big concerns or things that everyone was just wondering after they said that they were coming out with a 8K uh, mirrorless camera. And so some of the things we know is that it is going to be 8K no crop, which is amazing. You'll also get dual pixel AF in any 8K shooting mode. It does 8K up to 30 frames per second, and it does have animal detection, which that one surprised me that it's like one of the highlight specs, but hey, I guess people like to film their animals. And so in addition to good old face detection for people with the dual pixel autofocus, your dogs, cats, and I guess whatever else, will also get the benefit of its amazing autofocus. Now that we got some of the main specs out of the way, here are those five things to know before buying this camera. The first one is the storage and file sizes that come along with shooting 8K video. Now, a lot of people are still shooting in 1080, especially vloggers, because they shoot so much that they would have to buy in an insane amount of storage and external hard drives just to store all that footage. Now, I think more and more people have adopted 4K, but they've even realized with uh, higher end cameras how much storage that can actually take up. Now we're gonna get a little bit more in depth in terms of the, you know, the different codecs and how to storage in number five. But for now, I just wanted to simply say that if you have never shot with 8K cameras before, or even higher end 4K, be prepared to buy a ton of hard drives, or if you're one of those few people who are totally able to shoot something and then create it, upload it, and then delete all your footage, you may be in that boat as well. In addition to just storing the footage once you have it on your computer, you're also gonna need a lot more memory cards for the actual camera, or at least higher storage capacity drives. Because again, it's gonna take up a ton of memory. And so if you have to buy, especially like CFast cards, that's going to get very expensive. So whenever the price of this camera is released, let's say it's like $5,000 or something, if you only have 5,000 to put into a new camera, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because you are going to need heavy amounts of storage for your computer and storage for your memory cards. Now sticking with the whole computer thing, number two is you're gonna need a beefy computer to work with this footage. Now again, we don't have the footage necessary to play with, but if you went online and downloaded some, let's say 8K RED footage, just to see how your computer handles it, I don't think that this footage is going to have anywhere near the amount of data that a RED camera is going to shoot on, but at least it'll give you some idea if your computer can handle editing 8K footage. Number three is 8K ready lenses. Now, sometimes when you're lens shopping, you may even see a specific uh, specification that says these lenses are rated for up to 8K. Now, we've talked a lot in the past about how a lens is arguably more important in terms of the final look of your image than the actual camera. On my second channel, The Edit Place, I showed footage that was shot on the Blackmagic both using my kit lens as well as a $11,000 lens that we rented for a shoot. And they look like two completely different cameras. Now, of course, what you want your final look to be, maybe you like a softer image or something with a lot of lens characteristics like vintage lenses. Just know that if you want super tack sharp, you are going to need to make sure that your lens is 8K ready because once you pack these amount of pixels in this high of resolution, what may be a sharp 1080 or 4K lens may become very soft. And when you first buy this camera, you shoot on it, and then you import the footage, you may be severely disappointed with the lack of sharpness in the image and your lens may be to blame. 
Now next up is loads of batteries. Now this is kind of a general guideline to all cameras. It's always good to have a, a good amount of batteries on hand, more than what you think you'll need. But I can imagine unless Canon has created some crazy new battery technology, that this thing is gonna be somewhat of a battery hog, at least in those 8K shooting modes. I'm not saying it's gonna be as bad as the Pocket series, which gives like 30 to 40 minutes of shoot time on their Canon batteries. But the fact that there is no crop in the 8K modes shows me that they have some sort of crazy heat displacement technology built into the camera that's allowing it to use the full sensor without overheating it. And usually that takes up a lot of battery. Again, if I look at any time I shoot with RED, especially the 8K models, those guys chew through V-mount batteries in just an hour or two, depending on the size of them. And so I'll be very interested to see what sort of battery life these come out with and those vloggers who are used to just plugging in one little battery and getting all day use out of it, it'll be very interesting to see either the amazement or disappointment depending on the battery life that Canon soon announces. And finally, number five is to set proper expectations with things like bit rate, bit depth, and the actual overall data that you're going to get in these 8K shooting modes. Again, we've talked a lot in the past on this channel about the quality of pixel and the quality of how much data your footage actually has and not necessarily just the overall highlight spec that everyone throws out there of like this thing shoots 8K. In the past, I've used off-brand GoPros that shoot 4K because it's technically that amount of pixels and that resolution, but the bit rate that it shoots at is so terrible that when you compare it to a good 1080p camera, the 1080p blows it out of the water. Again, scaling it all the way up to the cinema camera world, that's why a Ari Alexa, which has been the primary camera for Hollywood for forever, who just this past year or two has come out with 4K and 6K cameras, the 3.2K that it's always shot at has pretty much always looked better than everything else because of the sensor size, the data rates that it shoots in. And again, that's why I like to fight for my Blackmagic cameras in good old camera battles because it's actually shooting 12-bit raw files compared to uh, they haven't released the codecs that the R5 will shoot in. But if we look at the EOS R or even the Canon C300, whether it's the uh, Canon RAW Lite or just a H.264 MP4 file. Again, due to the heat and the battery life, I can't imagine that it's gonna be some crazy high bit rates because again, that's kind of the sacrifice that Blackmagic took where they give you the best image quality possible on its sensor, but you greatly sacrifice battery quality and I think for most people, they've lived with the compression that mirrorless cameras have and the lack of data because it's good enough. I think this camera is going to have absolutely amazing quality to it. But if you start to pixel peep or you're a heavy color grader or you're just trying to use it in different situations in comparison to something like a cinema camera, just make sure you set your proper expectations and don't think that this mirrorless camera is going to be completely competing in the same world as a full-on cinema camera like the C500, Reds, or Aries. So there you guys have it. Those are five things just to think about and to know if you're thinking about buying the Canon EOS R. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this camera. Are you excited? Are you thinking about picking one up? A lot of creators are doing some really good stuff with the EOS R line. And so if you want more Canon EOS R content, I wanna give a shout out to my fellow Ohio creator, uh, Jayhawk is his channel, Johnny. He creates amazing content. He did a awesome Canon EOS R six month review and just picked up the Canon EOS RP and did a whole unboxing there. So I'll leave his stuff linked below as well. And my last self final plug here is I did mention my second channel, which is still growing, The Edit Place. That will also be in the description. You should check that out if you're into editing in any sort of software, especially DaVinci Resolve. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.